Hi everyone, I've uh, just opened up the, the webinar. Um, uh, we're still a couple of minutes away from the start. I'll mute myself in the meantime. Uh, we'll wait for everyone to, to join. Hello, everyone. We're still going to give it a few more minutes. Uh, I still see people uh, joining right now. Uh, so uh, let's uh, start in about in about two minutes. Okay, hi everyone. I hope you can uh, see me and hear me. Please just, uh, if you could acknowledge that for me, that would be uh, really great. Then I know that um, uh, you can see me, hear me actually on three things and you can see my screen, which right now has a um, high risk warning. Can I get confirmation from anyone on that? Wonderful, thank you for that. Okay, good. Uh, and you can see, and uh, thank you, Mohammed. And you can um, you can also see my screen, right? Oh, maybe you can't see my screen. Um, you should be able to. Can anyone see my screen? Yes, you can. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, to our uh, third and last uh, w webinar in this series. Uh, if you're, man, this is probably the most, uh, the most important webinar uh, in the series, uh, if not the most important webinar you'll ever attend. So uh, I'm glad that you, you join us. Uh, it's about uh, risk management. Um, and uh, before we get going, let's quickly uh, make all the lawyers happy and, uh, and have a look at the, at the disclaimer. 
uh, trading uh, CFDs on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Before deciding to trade uh, contracts for difference, you should uh, carefully consider your trading objectives, level of experience and risk appetite. It is possible if you just sustain losses that exceed your invested capital and therefore you should not deposit money that you cannot afford to lose. Please ensure you fully understand the risks and take appropriate care to manage your risk. Thank you for that. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about uh, today is about risk management. Um, so we are going to be using the Auto Chartist uh, Risk Calculator to do risk management. Um, and you can see that under the indicators uh, section of your MetaTrader, something called Auto Chartist Risk Management. We have gone through this uh, before in other webinars. If you want to know how to how to get uh, the order charters tool. It's quite easy. You click on uh, client tools, order charters, and um, you scroll down until you get the install MT4 plugin. Uh, and um, uh, uh, um, you, can, uh, you can install the MT4 plugin. Once you go through those steps, uh, you will get the order charts risk calculator and the uh, order Chartist market scanner on your uh, on your MetaTrader. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Order Chartist risk calculator today, uh, but it's dependent on some data which is downloaded by the expert advisor. So the first thing you got to do is just a drag and drop the EA onto your chart. Uh, it downloads a whole bunch of uh, data that we need, and I'll show you why in just a moment. And then uh, you can go ahead and close that and uh, use the risk calculator alone on its own. Um, now, uh, the risk calculator is not dependent whatsoever on the order charts market scanner. You can use it independently and you can use it using whatever uh, technical, fundamental, macroeconomic, whatever indicator that you want. Um, uh, you can use it in conjunction with any other strategy uh, that you want to use it with. OK, uh, so so. Um, don't think that it's joined to the market scanner in any way all right and in fact today i'm specifically going to be using it without a uh, the market scanner and i'm just going to be guessing at a whole bunch of uh, market directions uh, as well uh, i see there's already some questions coming through and um, i'm just gonna uh, give my little uh, presentation for a few minutes and then I'll get back to the uh, Q and A. Uh, so it's quite difficult for me to monitor both mon both screens in terms of Q and A and the presentation. So uh, risk management in uh, in trading CFDs or any over the counter instrument is extremely complicated. Um, I'll I'll and I'll and I'll start with a simple example. If we're looking at Euro USD, right? We're looking at trading Euro USD. We know that every pip in movement is worth 10 bucks, right? If you're trading on a standard account, right? Um, uh, and a standard lot is obviously $100,000 exposure on the market. Now, um, if you're using a, a, a mini account, then every pip is worth $1, right? In fact, any uh, USD as the base currency is always worth either $10 a, a pip on a standard account or $1 on a mini account. For example, that's Euro USD, GBP USD, um, uh, ORD USD. Anything that's uh, a, a base USD is always a, a, a dollar a pip or $10 a pip. But um, a lot of the time you don't trade simply uh, uh, base USD currencies. For example, if you're trading uh, USD Swiss franc, uh, the base currency for USD Swiss franc is actually Swiss franc, uh, uh, not USD, right? In which case, the value of a pip is not $10, okay? It's something different. And um, if you're trading uh, USD CAD, also the value of a pip is not $10, right? It can even get, uh, the, 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 I'm not going to go through the arithmetic of actually working out what a pip is worth uh, in this presentation, but it gets a lot more complicated. If you're trading something like GBP JPY, uh, the calculation is even more complex because you need to work out what 
uh, uh, GBP USD is, and then uh, USD JPY is, and then you multiply the two, I'm not going to go into the arithmetic, and you get what the value of the pip is worth for GBP JPY. So it, it can get pretty scary. And when you're trading um, uh, uh, on, on MetaTrader, and you're setting stop losses and take profits, you're setting them at levels, but you're not actually quite sure how much money you're risking, right? And actual dollars um, in your account, how much it is that you're risking. Um, so uh, if, if, for example, we're, we're trading uh, uh, Euro USD, let's switch to an hourly chart. Uh, let's make it a little bit more exciting, right? Um, if we're trading Euro USD on an hourly chart, uh, and the current price is, look at it, at 118.50, uh, let's just say, 118.50. Um, and I want to set my, if I want to go short, and I want to set my stop loss at 118.67, I know that it's a, a 12 uh, pip uh, stop loss. And uh, that's if I'm going short, of course. And so I know that's very easy on a standard account. Uh, that's 120 bucks of, um, of, of risk, right, that, I, that I'm actually trading. Um, but then the question comes in, okay, yeah, sure, I have a $50,000 uh, test account, um, but I don't want to risk 120 bucks. It's not worth it for me on a $50,000 account, right? Or it could be the opposite situation where you only have $1,000 in your account. You can't go ahead and risk uh, um, 120 bucks of your $1,000. There's no way you should be risking 12% of your capital on a single trade, right? It doesn't make sense. So if you're, let's say, got 1,000 bucks in your account, there's no way you should be trading one lot uh, you know, uh, on this, uh, this that would be an insane amount of risk to take uh, of, of $120 on this position. So, um, what what traders end up doing is they end up trying to move their stop losses in order to risk, uh, in order to fit in with a risk profile. Uh, let me zoom in and show you what I mean by that. Um, so. Uh, let's say I only want to risk uh, uh, $50, right? Then uh, what I would look at is a five pip stop loss. So does that mean I need to set my stop loss around here? That would be absolutely ludicrous. Let's say I want to go short. I mean, euro, uh, the euro is going to hit this level within five minutes, man. I mean, uh, a five pip stop loss. It, it doesn't make sense. Uh, to, to trade a five pip stop loss. What do you do? Walk away from this trade? Uh, that would be a really, really silly thing, uh, really silly thing to, to do. Um, now, this is the problem with the misconception that traders have around uh, uh, stop losses. The idea around stop losses is not, is not to change your stop loss depending on your risk level. You should step, set your stop loss dependent on market volatility and market conditions. And when you believe that from a perspective of your trading strategy, you have made the wrong call. So if I had to set my, uh, choose a stop loss, if you had to force me to go short on your USD right now, and I had to set a stop loss, I would set it where I've got, drawn the red line now. Why? Because I can see that this is kind of where the previous turning point was, okay? And if it goes through that point, then I think it's made the wrong, um, I've made the wrong decision. But again, now I'm in back in a, in a, in a spiral, right? But now again, I'm risking uh, from, what is it, 1850 to 18, so I'm risking 12 pips uh, 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 again, but I'm back at $120. So the idea now is to change the position size, right? So if I only wanna risk, uh, um, uh, on 12 pips, I only want to risk uh, 60 bucks, I would trade 0 0.5, right? Does that make sense to you? So, so instead of trading one lot, I would trade half a lot. If I want to only trade, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, 30 bucks, I would trade 0.25, right? That would give me a, a 25 pip uh, uh, oh, sorry, a $25 risk on uh, this $12, right, or $30 risk approximately on, on, this, on this trade. So I'm trying to give you a hint about how a professional trader looks at their 
um, uh, at, at, their, at, their, at their trades from a risk management perspective. It gets more interesting. So let's just say that I want to go long, right? Because I'm a trend trader. And I want to set my stop loss over here at 118.20. Uh, it's now 118.47. That's a 27 uh, pip stop. If I trade a single lot, I am I'm risking 270 bucks, right? If I don't want to risk 270 bucks, what do I do? And the answer is no, I do not move my stop loss. Okay. What I do is I change my position size, right? So instead of trading one lot on this, if I want to, let's say, risk $135, I will trade 0.5. If I want to trade a quarter of that, I'll trade 0.25. Okay, but this is easy to do with your USD, okay, because every pip is worth 10 bucks, right? So that's really, really simple, right? So that's what's the what's the big deal here, right? Okay, you're asking. Okay, let's let's look at Swiss franc. Can anyone uh, in this audience, and I can't even do it in my head, can anyone tell me uh, what my, if I want to go long on USD Swiss franc, uh, this is, uh, let me see the numbers here. This is a 12 pip uh, stop loss. What my dollar risk is on on this i i, I look I, I i'm not all going to work it out in my head right and i certainly don't want to go to a risk calculator online to have to work this out and so this is where the risk the auto charts risk calculator comes in so let me show you what it looks like so if we drag and drop the risk calculator onto the chart we immediately get a uh, a um uh, orange line on on our chart and that orange line can be used for us to tell the risk calculator where we're thinking of setting our stop loss. Okay, so if I move this thing around, let's say I wanna set it here at this level over here. And then you can see that stop loss has changed and I wanna risk uh, $50 on my 50, I wanna actually risk $50. Then the risk calculator is telling me Ilan, set your volume to be 0 0.78, right? So if I'm trading here and I want to trade uh, um, with this stop loss, right? Uh, I should trade a position of 0 0.78 if I only want to risk $50 of my account, okay? Let's change this to a nice round number. Let's make it $100, right? If I want to risk $100, that means I should set my position to be 1.44. Okay, let's look at it the other way around. Let's say I want to go short and I want to set my uh, stop loss up here at this level at 0, uh, 90, uh, 71. How, what position do I need to set if I want to go short? Notice how my volume has changed because obviously my the size of my stop loss from the current market price has changed dramatically. It's up to 30 pips instead of six pips. And so it's telling me to set my volume to be 0.3, right? I hope we're all, I hope we're all together on, on, uh, on this, right? So the risk calculator is actually telling me what the volume should be. And again, I want to highlight this very, very important fact. Don't move your stop loss around to manage your risk. Set your stop loss where you believe uh, the price uh, where the limit areas are of, the, of, of, of your trading system and then set change your position size uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to tell you how to manage your risk. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, and actually uh, place uh, a few trades. What do, you, what do you all say? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back to, the, uh, to a, uh, a, a, a daily chart and I want to come up with a a nice little portfolio of positions increasing in complexity so you can follow what I'm doing. So let's drag and drop the risk calculator. Um, who thinks I'm gonna go long? Yeah, let's go long on Euro USD and let's set my stop loss at this level over here because I see it's a nice uh, support level. Okay, so I wanna go long on Euro USD and I wanna risk uh, um, $100. Now, this is a daily chart. So this is an absolutely massive amount of pips, 160 pips. So it's actually telling me only risk as a trader volume of 0 0.06. In fact, in fact, let me make this $1,000, right? So I'll make it a more reasonable amount of dollars. So I'm going to set my stop loss 
uh, at this price over here, and I'm going to set my position to be point, point 0.6, and I'm going to buy at market. Okay, so I've got one position open on a daily chart on EURUSD. Let's try now, make it one step more complex. Let's look at USD JPY. Okay, uh, I'm going to remove this. I'll talk about that later. Um, I want to go short on USD JPY and set my stop loss at 106.066 with a risk of $122. I want to risk $1,000. Note my position size now, right? So if I want to set my stop loss here, my position size needs to be uh, 0.86. Notice what I've done. I've opened one position on EURUSD long uh, with, I think it was 170 pips of, of risk. Another position on USD JPY short with 123 pips in risk. But in both of those, I've risked the same amount of money, okay? I've only risked $1,000 of my equity, right? Which is about 2% of my equity, right? So let me make it even more complex. Let's switch to a hourly chart and trade uh, a cross rate, Euro GBP. Okay, I want to set a cross rate of Euro GBP and I want to set my stop loss at um at seven pips away right seven pips away really really short term position and i want to risk a thousand dollars right a maximum of thousand dollars i should set a position of 10 of 10 lots right so let's let's have a look at what that looks like so if i'm trading a thousand dollars and i want to set my stop loss at this price over here, I should set my position at 14.17 buy. This is an extreme trade. Okay, let's see, that's super risky, okay? But now I've opened three different positions, one on a, 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 a Euro USD daily chart, one on USD JPY uh, daily chart. Okay, so the PIP value is different. One on Euro GBP hourly chart, uh, with a tiny little risk in pips, right? Only five pips in, in risk. The others were 100 pips and another one was uh, or 170, another one was 122. And notice though, in all of them, I've only risked uh, $1,000, right? Okay, so so obviously as a, as a percentage of my equity, that's really, really uh, small, right? It's only 2% of my equity. We can make the numbers more realistic uh, if, we, if we like. Uh, let's look at something like, uh, GBP JPY, which is obviously a GBP JPY. If any of you trade that, that is the, the killer of all traders, right? So let's trade GBP JPY with a stop loss around uh, this level over here, 66 pips away. Uh, I want to go long, risking $1,000. I want to uh, go long on that. Let me set my stop loss to be here and my volume to be one, uh, oops, uh, 1.6, and I'll buy it market. Okay, cool. So now I'm, uh, uh, I'm in uh, the market on four different positions uh, across four different timeframes, uh, right? Uh, it's, it's, um, it's uh, uh, and yet, again, I've only risked $1,000. Right, so this is extremely, extremely powerful. I hope you 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 all are appreciating the power of of um, of, of this tool. You can also set your position as a risk of equity or as a, a percentage as a percentage of equity or percentage of balance. I hope you both know and or understand what the difference is between equity and balance, right? So balance is the amount of money you actually have in your uh, in your portfolio. Uh, equity um, is um, is obviously uh, 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 your equity including your uh, open uh, your open positions. Right. Okay. So, so it, it's two completely different things. But um, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, you can also just look at it from a pure dollars perspective. Now, if your uh, account uh, is not in USD, mine is in USD. But if it's not in USD, then your risk amount will adjust to your account. So, if you've got a euro account or an Australian dollar account, 
um, then the risk calculator will change its uh, risk to show you that in your account um, in your account currency, right? Which I think is quite a is quite a useful uh, it's quite a useful little feature. Okay. Now uh, I'm in the market and I'm watching. Oh, I was up 200 bucks a moment ago. Now I'm down 200 bucks. It's that it's that extreme position. I took a 14 uh, <laughs> 14. 0.17 a lot. So that's a bit of a crazy position size. But look, I am trading with a $50,000 account. But uh, yeah, certainly massive swings in the market. And we're probably going to get that stop loss hit in just in just a moment. Uh, uh, that's on. Um, yeah, we got it. We got it hit. Okay, so we were down, uh, down some cash. That was obviously an extreme position to take. Um, okay, but we're up on all our other positions. Now, um, let's, um, let's go ahead and, um, and get a little bit more complex uh, when when we were trading, right? Um, so now let's choose a different currency pair. If any of you have anything else that you want to trade right now, uh, let me know. Uh, send it into my chat, and we'll we'll actually trade uh, whatever you uh, whatever you want. Any any recommendations for something to trade? I want to trade a um, either a, a limit or a stop order uh, right now, and show you how that works. Okay, no recommendations. Let's choose the really obscure one, Swiss franc JPY. All right, let's see. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so um, I'm looking at Swiss franc JPY, and what I want to do. Um, oh, I've got some stuff coming through here. GBP USD. Okay, GBP USD. Let's try GBP USD. Uh, where Where is my GBP USD? All right, GBP USD. Okay. Let's check this out. Oh my God! Look at that thing rocket. Okay, <laughs> uh, that's a, actually a, a, a okay, an interesting example. All right. So, what I want to do is I let's say uh, want to set a um, I want to set a sell stop order. I want to try a stop order, and I want my stop order uh, to enter at this price over here, right? So as you can see, what I've done is I have ticked my custom entry price and i click that and a green line appears right so what i'm doing is i'm dragging my uh, green line to where i want to enter the market and in this situation i want to set a sell stop which means that if the price comes down through this level then i'll take a short position okay so i'm setting a sell stop then i move my uh, stop loss level to where I think the stop needs to be. Okay, let's say over here, right? So now the risk calculator calculates my risk not between the current price and the stop loss, but between the op my opening price, right, which is the green line and the and the and the orange line, right? So now what I can do is what would my order look like? I would say it's a uh, it's a, 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 a obviously a pending order. It's a, a sell stop. Well, I want to risk a uh, thousand dollars on this thing, right? So my volume. Uh, um, actually, let me set the price first. So my custom entry price would be over here. My stop loss would be over here, and then my volume would be two point four seven. Oh, what did my uh, price uh, disappear. Right there we go. So now what I've done is, if my you can see I've got this pending order over here. If my price hits my green line, right? So that means if pound uh, if the pound turns around, hits my green level, it'll open a short position and set my stop loss at this orange line. And again, I'm only risking. A thousand, a thousand dollars. Oh, why did I put a thousand and ninety? That was really stupid of me. There we go, thousand and ninety. Okay, close enough. Uh, all right, for demonstration purposes. Um, I actually like that other example on that. Uh, was it a CAD? Uh, no, just Swiss franc JPY that I wanted to trade at. Yeah, I like. I quite like this one uh, because it's heading down, and uh, let's see if it'll. It's on an hourly chart. Mm, let's see something more short term, something that might actually hit. Uh, let's uh, try and trade uh, the bounce. Okay, let's try and trade. Uh, oh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty cool one. Let's hope this, this hits. Okay, so let's try and trade 
a buy limit, right? Does everyone know what a buy limit is? Buy limit means if it hits the green line, then we take a long position, okay? So if it hits the green line, crosses it, then we take a long position, assuming it's going to, uh, uh, it's going to go up, right? So now we, um, we set my, uh, I set my green line at where I want my price to, my entry price to be. I set my orange line to be, let's say, uh, over here. That's when I admit I've made the wrong decision, okay? Uh, so uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I would set a buy limit, a pending order with a buy limit. Okay, cool. Um, my volume uh, should be, again, it should be $1,000, which is insane. I'm not going to risk $1,000 in the short-term trade. I'm going to risk uh, 1.31, um, uh, which is just $100 of, of risk uh, with a stop loss at the orange level, right? I'm going to set my entry price to be at this level over here and I would place. Okay, so let's see what happens, right? So what's, what should happen in the next few moments is, uh, is uh, this, uh, this trade over here that I've highlighted the buy limit. If a uh, Swiss franc yen, if a Swiss yen hits this green line, uh, I should be entered into the market uh, with a long position. And of course my stop loss will be at 115. But again, what is the, the beauty about this? is that I'm trading a 15 minute chart with some obscure cross rate, Swiss franc yen, okay? God help me if I can work the pip value out for that for the, from that rate in my head, okay? I'd have to be a, a, an arithmetic a genius or uh, get my uh, 11 year old to come and do some, some little fractions for me. Uh, and then, um, uh, and, 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 but yet I know how many dollars I've actually uh, risked. Okay, so let's see if that happens. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm, I'm praying this hits so we can actually see a live example of a pending order uh, coming through. So risky to do this on a live webinar, uh, <laughs> you know, hoping the position will hit. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, while we're, while we're working on that, uh, um, I'm going to remove that custom entry price. I want to show you another uh, super cool uh, feature of this tool. If it get if it can get even cooler than what it is already, um, and that's this little thing called a show expected trading ranges. Okay, so now if I do show expected trading ranges, what you will notice is a whole bunch of lines uh, coming up on the right hand side. Let me untick that and then retick that again so that you can all see what I'm what I'm talking about. So this is uh, more of a lifestyle tool, I would say. Um, that uh, 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 in that it tells you what we can expect from a trading range perspective on Swiss franc yen. So wh what it's saying is that we expect this to trade in this range in the next 15 minutes, with this range in the next 30 minutes, within this range in the next four hours, Oh, sorry, a uh, one hour, oh, that was the one hour range, sorry. And then the four hour range is down here and then the next 24 hour range is somewhere off my screen, okay? So it's actually telling me what my potential price ranges are. Oh, and you can see my position was just hit, uh, which is awesome. Cool. So uh, we've taken a, a, so now I'm hoping that this thing bounces, right? Okay, so sorry, I get distracted for just a moment, right? Uh, so, um, it, it's really a, a lifestyle tool, right? So, if, if for, for example, I'm, I'm busy in a webinar for you now, but but let's say um, uh, my wife is busy getting the kids ready. Normally, I take the kids to school. Uh, if I was out there with my kids trying to get them ready for school, I wouldn't be trading a 15-minute chart with these kind of stop levels, right? And the reason why is because if I expect the stop level to hit if it does hit, right? If I've made the wrong decision, if it does, hit, it'll hit in the next 15 minutes. You can see it's within the next 15 minutes trading range. But hey, man, I'm supposed to be outside uh, taking my kids to school, preparing breakfast for them and lunch boxes and all kinds of stuff. I shouldn't be uh, trading this kind of range. So, right, when, if, if I was taking doing this stuff at home, I would be setting my stop losses way out, right? In the hourly range, in the four hourly range, knowing that uh, uh, I have all these responsibilities at home that I need to take care of, right? So 
this is important. Okay, so when you uh, when you uh, change to a different chart, let's say the M30 chart, what you'll see is that we only show the 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 ranges from that time interval, right? So we don't show the 15 minute range. We show the 30 minute range, hourly range, and four hourly range, and then obviously the 24 hourly range is somewhere off my off my screen. And if I then flip to a uh, a, a hourly chart, you will see that uh, I have the hourly range and four hourly range and the 24 hourly range. And if I go to the four hour, then I obviously get the four hour and 24 hour. And if I'm looking at a daily chart, then obviously I would only get the, the daily trading range uh, uh, for myself, right? Because we assume I'm, I'm trading the, the much longer the much longer time frame. But again, I'm flipping across to my, uh, uh, to my uh, position over here. Now, I'm really, really hoping for demonstration purposes that this uh, stop loss hits because I want to prove to you, right, how we've only risked 100 bucks on my position. And you can see it's kind of relevant. I was kind of midway through, excuse my dog barking in the background, uh, the, the wonders of COVID and working from home, right? Um, so uh, you can see it was kind of moving towards that level. Uh, you get a general idea of the numbers that I set my position here uh, and that's what the money I've risked. Of course, there's sometimes there's situations where, uh, you know, there's some market slippage. You might not get executed exactly at that price. Uh, the market isn't at uh, whatever my stop loss level is. Maybe there wasn't an execution at 115.809. Uh, the next price was 115.808. You know, so you might uh, get, uh, uh, get slipped a little bit because uh, it just wasn't a, a counterparty at uh, 115.809. Um, uh, but but in general, uh, this is a very very good indication of how much money you've actually uh, risked on this on this trade. Cool. So uh, um, uh, I'm going to leave this uh, this loot this this one position open. I want to close the rest of them in in profit. Uh, um, uh, let me do that. Okay. Uh, a good day. Obviously, I took that crazy. 10, per, uh, 10 lot position earlier, uh, which made me may, maybe lose a bit of money, but obviously that's not something you would do uh, um, in a real trading scenario. I'm going to leave this one open in hopes that I hit my stop loss. I know it's crazy to think that I want to lose money. This is a demo account, uh, but I want to hit my stop loss so that I can actually show you how we've only risked uh, 100 bucks on this trade. Okay. In the meantime, um, I've already spoken for about 30 minutes uh, and reached the end of the webinar, so I want to go to the Q&A. Uh, okay, let's see. So I have a, a question from uh, Abibat. Uh, let me read that. A high minimum probability drop down list and phone feature are not showing on before account following my download last week. Okay, uh, Abibat is actually asking a question about the um, order chartist uh, uh, market scanner. Uh, he's saying that um, the um, Oh, and I'm not getting it either. I'm not getting a little uh, Abibat. Looks like I'm suffering from the same bug you're suffering from. Uh, <laughs> so let me tell everyone. Uh, um, it's a bit unrelated to this uh, webinar, but I'll answer anyway. Um, there's supposed to be two additional features over here. Um, a, a, a drop-down filter for minimum probability and a little cell phone icon for access to our mobile application. Uh, that is a bit weird. Uh, Abibat, uh, uh, I am going to report this to my uh, support department. If you want a response on that, uh, won't you uh, won't you please um, send an email uh, to um, uh, support at autochartist.com asking that question? Uh, we will uh, get back to you on that. Uh, so sorry about that. Looks like I'm suffering from the same problem you're suffering from. Maybe there was a, a setting misconfiguration on, on our side. Uh, but yeah, you should definitely see that. Okay. Um, so then I have a whole bunch of, uh, oh, Muhammad is enjoying the live action. <laughs> Good. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, Abibat, I will have a look at that. If you can um, uh, privately send me your email address from which you sent that request, I will make sure that someone gets back to you uh, before the end of the day today. Uh, if you can send that to me privately, I'll make sure that you get a response on that. Uh, not quite sure what happened with that. Um, okay, so um, uh, 
okay, I've got a few uh, requests to trade Euro, uh, uh, Euro Kiwi. Okay, let's see what Euro Kiwi uh, uh, looks like. Uh, do we have a, a Euro Kiwi on my, on my list? Euro, oh, I do, I have it on my list. Let's see what uh, Euro Kiwi uh, looks like right now. It uh, looks like it's trending down short term, trending down slightly longer, trending down, trending, oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, let's trade Euro Kiwi. So what would I do on Euro Kiwi right now? Uh, depends how short term you wanna go. Let's trade the hourly chart. It'll maybe a little bit more reasonable. Uh, let's trade Euro Kiwi right now uh, over here. Um, what I would do is potentially uh, go uh, short um, over here. I like that consolidation over here at this level here. Uh, trade risk $1,000 at 1 1.7 1 in risk. Uh, and I would sell at market. Uh, that's how I would have traded a Euro Kiwi now on the hourly chart. Um, I think there's more to take into consideration. Uh, I think um, if you look at the daily chart uh, on uh, Euro Kiwi uh, potential trend upwards, interestingly enough. Uh, so you might want to take a different kind of position uh, on uh, the bullish side. Um, if you're trending uh, a longer term position, you might want to uh, trend uh, by or go long here uh, with a, uh, a very large stop loss around 206 at the previous uh, long term uh, support level. Uh, you can see that support level very strongly over here, here here, here, breakthrough here, it was resistance here, again, support over here, very, very important level, uh, an interesting trade to tra take here, or uh, maybe uh, some kind of very long-term uh, buy limit uh, for a bounce uh, over here, um, also a very interesting position to, to take uh, on, on that. Uh, yeah, nice, nice choice. Who was that that recommended? Uh, uh, that was Ron. Uh, Ron, uh, interesting one to look at. Um, uh, I wonder how you picked that one out, uh, Euro NZD. I want to I wanna see what, um, if Autochart says something about Euro NZD. Quickly. Uh, oops, it's still busy. I have a whole bunch of stuff on Euro. Uh, nothing, oh, Euro NZD. Uh, Ah, there it is. Oh, so we identified something a while back, a bit of a, it almost hit our take profit uh, and then it uh, it turned around. So yeah, there's definitely something happening on on uh, Euro NZD. A very interesting one, uh, Ron, uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, I think some definite, uh, very interesting uh, support resistance levels here. Certainly break up through resistance over here right now, uh, potentially long. I think I went the, went the wrong way, didn't look at the charts. Uh, um, with enough uh, enough detail on on that one, definitely. Uh, okay. Um, uh, my email is there is my email, uh, um, uh, Abibat. Uh, you can email me directly with your request. I'll find what's going on. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, with that, ha having said that, um, um, uh, trading randomly, uh, <laughs> I hope you, well, you all enjoyed all the random trades that I placed uh, and learned something. Again, uh, by the way, this tool is uh, free of charge, right? So no one's trying to pitch you anything or sell you anything. Uh, just if you have a live account at Tickmill, uh, this, this, um, this tool is free of charge. Go ahead, download it, uh, play around with it. Um, I'm really hoping it saves you a lot of money. Don't risk 15, 20% of your equity on a trade. You should be risking two to 5% at most on every single trade. Um, I hope the risk calculator um, uh, helps you with, with your risk management. Uh, this will be, uh, this webinar will be available uh, for download probably in the next day or two once they erase all the stuff at the front and all the stuff at the back. Um, and um, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, we'll have it. Uh, we'll, um, Ali will have this webinar recording up for you probably by uh, tomorrow or the next day. Uh, you'll get an email from um, uh, from from them uh, from uh, from Tickmill um, with with a recording link. Thank you everyone for your attention. Uh, I've I've hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Mohammed, for the compliments. Uh, very very kind of you. Um, uh, 
uh, I, I appreciate it. Mohammed complimented me for an amazing webinar. Well, I'm not sure if it was amazing, but anyway, I hope I help you uh, manage your risk. Um, good. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day or a good evening, wherever you are in the world. <laughs>